everyone uh so update this isn't gonna be edited but um you may be able to tell no bookcases behind me um in the last several days uh <laughs> i've been frantically packing um i was offered a job and i get to leave alberta <laughs> i'm very excited and thankful um it's a programming librarian position which is something a teen and a, and a programming librarian were like my goals for profession and something um you know finally lined up and i'm very excited i don't have to take a giant pay cut or anything like that which was like my big thing librarians library positions don't pay a ton but like i need to be able to pay my student loans and my car loan and my rent and whatever so something finally appeared so uh i start at the end of september actually the last monday of september um so i had about two and a half three weeks between saying yes to the position and uh, having to start. So I am moving um, from Alberta back to, I mean, like where Quebec and Ontario kind of border are. Um, so that is uh, uh, three days or so driving reasonably. So I have a U-Haul that I have to get next. This is going up on Tuesday. So the following Tuesday, I'm picking it up and pack it up. And then I'll be gone by the end of that week, um, by the midweekend. Um, so all of my books are packed. <laughs> um, all I really have left is my furniture, which is going to come with me, the stuff that I have, and um, my clothes. And the plan now is to stay with my sister and my mom uh, for the first couple weeks, maybe a month or so, get started at my job um, and just commute. It's a little bit farther away, but that's totally commutable since I have a reliable vehicle now. Um, get the dogs comfy and... Um, I will start looking for a place. So there's not going to be any videos for a little while. Um, I do hope once I get settled in my own place that I can start doing videos again. Um, I'll have to buy some bookcases because I sold those. I don't know what the size or my space of whatever place I end up renting is going to be because I'm moving. I'm taking my clothes that I need for work and like my makeup and like the dog stuff to stay with me at my sister's. But everything else basically is going into storage, including all my furniture and everything like that, into a U-Haul unit for a little bit until I find a place. So um, I just, you know, I have other things. I also don't know what my, my schedule is going to be like. It is in a public library, so I'm not going to be um, an office. It's not going to be Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, the way I was here. So I don't know what that's going to look like, um, if I'm going to be able to do film, filming and that sort of stuff. And also, I... I think a huge reason for me starting this video or this this channel was being stuck in Alberta where I didn't really have any friends and I didn't like it and I didn't really go outside and socialize. Um, whereas Ontario, I have so many people that have already said like, we have to meet up once you come in um, and things to do and travel and explore because it's a new area and it's pretty conveniently set up. I'm currently, the closest city to me is Edmonton really up here and it's like five hour drive. There's no trains, there's uh, flights and they're about three, four hundred dollars a piece each way. So they're just super expensive um, and really bad times. I think there's only like two or three flights that you can take out a day and there's, that's kind of it. Um, so I, I, I have so much more that I can do in Ontario and also just being around my sister and my mom who um, I saw them at Christmas when we were, when I went in lockdown with them in Ontario. Um, and then before that, it was like in March when my grandpa died and we went to his funeral and like that's kind of it. So um, getting to know the area, they're not from that area either. They've moved there a couple years ago, so we can do some exploring between all of us and there's just lots of stuff we can do together. Um, and then having the dogs and getting to explore new areas and that sort of stuff. So and it's also an area where like realistically, I am white, but I grew up, my hometown also quite white, but I mean, I grew up playing hockey in Brampton, which is largely Pakistani and Indian people, um, and, you know, playing sports all over the GTA, uh, or the greater Toronto area, sorry, where everything is so, like, you see people from all over the world who just end up settling, um, or visiting the area, and then moving up here, it is so very, like, homogenized white cowboy, racisty oil conservative, and it's just not an area where I ever felt honestly even safe trying to find friends like you kind of had to pause and read the room and be like is this person gonna assault me verbally or physically before I say anything um and I just I'm I don't have that fear when I go back um so I am very excited very very excited and I am excited about the job I did two rounds of interviews for this job um I I felt incredibly comfortable 
um, and so excited and eager even after the first interview. I was interviewing at another place that didn't end up getting that job, but I, I did that jobs interview first and then I got the, I had this first interview for this job and I was like I would take anything to get out of this province honestly right now because our province is just in um, it's a mess um but if I had to choose I would pick this job the second job here that is a little bit less money and in the job posting it didn't specify if it came with a pension or not but I was like even if it doesn't come with a pension and this first one did, if I got to choose, I would pick this second one. This just feels like so much of a better fit and I got good vibes off the interviewees and it was kind of like casual but still staying on point and everything. Um, and then I got called, I want to say like a week later or so, um, saying, you know, you're the successful candidate. We're going to do another round. You're one of the successful candidates. I have no idea how many people they interviewed, how many people got hired because they were hiring some different positions at the same time too. Um, but um, they, we had a second interview and second interview was even more lax, but um, I just got good like energy bouncing off of each other. I think we were all going to be like, okay, we can work together really well. Um, and then they called my references a couple days later and I was like, oh my God, I think I got the job. Though I know some places will call all candidates references and then sit down and be like, okay, these are our options. But everywhere I've ever worked has been like, okay, we'll pick our person and then call the references because it's just instead of wasting our time, right? Um, but it's, you know, it's government. It can be set up either way. And then I heard nothing for like four or five days. I had a meltdown. I cried. <laughs> that I just, I was already like a foot out the door. Um, and I never heard anything. And I was like, oh, they must have just contacted all the candidates' references. And then they're just waiting to hear back from whoever they offered it to if they accept it. Um, and then I cried and then stayed home from work the next day, A, for my mental health, but also my eye was super puffy. And then like halfway through the day, they called that day um, and we're like, do you want the job? It's yours if you want it. So um, I accepted it and cried again, <laughs> took the day off and just have frantically been packing since. I have far less stuff than I thought I did, honestly. I managed to, I did a big weed of my books. Um, I kept most of my completed series because I've been weeding off and on for the past like several months being like, you know, this isn't something I would want to move with. Let's donate it. Um, the books um, were donated to um, the place that I'm currently working but leaving um, for the Take a Book, Leave a Book um, collection. And um, I think I just had a million signs that this was the right time, um, especially in library field. I don't know if it's like this everywhere else, but a lot of job postings will say like, will be at the base, ask for two years experience. But a lot of the times I'll see like one to three year experience requests. And I graduated in 2016 and got the job that I have right now, um, right away. So I graduated, I actually missed my graduation ceremony in Nova Scotia because I moved out here on May 2, 4 weekend. And I've been here since 2016. Um, I actually really like my job itself for the most part. There's up and ups and downs like every job, but like I'm paid fairly. My supervisor is amazing, but she's retiring, which was another sign that I was like, okay, things are changing. Um, we had, uh, I was the youngest staff person um, and the newest staff person for like four years because we just didn't hire anyone. Like we didn't have a ton of overturn. Um, and in just the last couple of years with like, we had to change back to a conservative government here, which has just not been great if you work in the, you know, public field. Um, it's just more and more isolating up here. Um, we don't have access to a lot of basic things either. Like I said, Ikea, I just, I end up selling my bookcases because like we, the closest Ikea is like five hours away. People were like, well, this is cheaper. Like, so that, and, um, it's just generally not a comfortable atmosphere. I like my job and I like my home, but I like nothing else. So I did nothing but go to work and stay home because home was safe. I have a wonderful landlord. If I could take my apartment and I, it's not a huge apartment, but I like it. Um, if I could take my landlord in this apartment and take it with me to Ontario, I would. I would do it in a heartbeat. My landlord was amazing. I told him in advance, you know, um, my lease is in six month increments, but I was like, yo, just so you know, I'm applying for, I'm, a, I'm, I'm interviewing for a job. So I may be leaving in the next couple months. What would the process be like for me getting out of my lease early? Um, and he's like, well, we have the last month's rent that you paid when you got the place. So we would use that. And then we would try and if we can get someone in great. Um, and you know, we'll just let you enter your lease early. So I am midway September gone basically from here. That gives them the end of September to, um, make any, don't really need to make much changes. Maybe a couple baseboards or paint needs to be done and that's it. Um, and he should be able to, there's not many basement apartments that are just one bedrooms either. And this is a nice place. 
um, and it's well located. It has a driveway, so I don't think I'll have a hard time filling it. And then I would get my October rent back, and then I'm out of it. Um, and he's said he'll give me a reference, so when I need to start looking in in Ontario, uh, Quebec area, then um, I can do that with reference of a landlord for five years. Um, and I felt bad almost. I gave my notice and my immediate supervisor who's on retiring was like, oh, wow. And then, um, a few seconds after, like I was telling her about the job, she's like, oh, that's going to be good for you. That's good. That's, that's really good for you. And like her reasons for retiring are kind of similar to the reasons that I'm moving. Um, and then, you know, telling our CEO who was like, yeah, you'll be good for this position. They're lucky to have you. We'll miss you. But this is definitely like something you know, it's, it's, a, it's a position that was almost made for you. Um, and then I cried because everyone at work was like being so nice. And my landlord was being so nice. And I was like, maybe I'm making a huge mistake. But I think between just how I grew up in elementary school to high school and then just just trying to survive for the six years of university, I just bounced so much. I moved every like eight months or so, whether that was school years, bad rant landlords, which happens often, um, moving for schools, you know, moving for summer jobs, whatever. This is the longest I have had a stable income, which came with raises annually with a good supervisor. Um, in a stable home that was always warm and safe and like was never being impeded upon by a landlord or a sketchy roommate or anything like that. Um, it's hard to let those things go, but I'm almost 30, which I can't believe that. Um, you know, maybe it's time now to, I want to, in my interview with the job that I took, um, they asked, you know, what's your five year goal? What is it prof professional, personal, whatever. And I think I had this, and I, I, I don't know why I thought personal instead of, oh, I shouldn't say that. I said personal goal instead of professional because my professional one was just to get into a position that was a new challenge and that was public facing. And that's what this position would be. That's like, was my goal. I don't really have any plans after that because I want to see how this feels. Um, but personal goal was like living somewhere, though I have always felt safe in my home. I have never put up something on a wall here. I've lived here for five and a half years and I've never put a painting up. I bought picture frames and just never put pictures in them. There's a million other reasons, A, just because it's not super convenient because you have to go like find a picture and then send it to a proper whatever. But I have lived here for five and a half years and I've just never felt like this place was permanent enough in order to decorate it. I want to find somewhere that even if I like move houses or whatever, but somewhere that I feel that I'm going to stay and I can justify putting up a picture on a wall. And that's just not what I got here, unfortunately. So I loved all the experiences I got from my work. My supervisor, especially, this was the an amazing first job to get out of university. And I am so incredibly lucky that she just said yes to me an awful lot and gave me more responsibilities when I asked for them and, you know, let me trip and fall and stumble and learn things. And just I never felt punished or talked down to. And she just gave a lot of I'm going to trust you until you give me a reason not to trust you. Um, so. I hope that whoever gets my position, they're morphing a couple positions because another sign of things to change. We had in the past like three or four years, we had like th four, I think, employees who had been here for like over two decades or something like that retire. Um, and so we've had so much new staff and their positions hadn't really ever cha changed since they started. And then we got an, an, one of the new staff people that came in for a retirement was our CEO. So now it's just a time that they're going to be doing just like an instruct an organizational reorganizing. Like why are things in certain areas? We just put them somewhere because someone was good at it, not because it necessarily coordinates with the job title. And now that person's no longer here. So this doesn't fit here anymore, you know? Um, so that was happening. And I just, all of these signs. Um, and then finally finding jobs that I was qualified for and that I could, you know, even confidently inter uh, apply to interview for. Because um, for years, I feel like it's just been like contract page jobs or CEOs and that's it. So um, it's just a million reasons. And I'm really happy with the decision. And I'm a lot less scared, I think, than when I moved out here right out of grad school, because I have a little bit of an idea what I'm doing in my field. But also I'm moving back, you know, to my home province, not my hometown by any means. I hated that place. Um, but it's got my sister and my mom nearby and we have a much better relationships now than we, we did when I was growing up or when I was finishing school. 
and um, my mental health is better. My financial standing is better. I have a good credit score. That was another thing I did while living here. I built up my credit score, so I think I'll have an easier time finding a place with a credit score and a reference letter from a landlord of five years. Um, so there's just a lot of positive things, and I, I just want to look at those. It's going to be a hassle to move. Uh, I was planning on renting those storage pods, but a bunch of the companies don't service here. And then some of them are just like wildly expensive. Um, and then because I have to move so quickly, some of the companies are just like, we just don't have any openings in the next two or three weeks. Sorry. So I rented a U-Haul, um, I'm packing and bringing with me my couch. Cause I bought that new this past year, my bed, which I bought new this past year, this desk dresser vanity thing that I bought from Canadian Tire and the chair and last furniture oh no I'm also taking this small chest freezer that my supervisor had given to me a couple years ago it works great they're expensive to rebuy I want to keep it it would fit in an apartment because it's small and then my floating kitchen island and the rest of it's just like books and clothes and that sort of stuff so I think I can do it and um I'm excited so I don't plan on just never posting on here again I just don't know realistically if that's going to be in six weeks or in like eight months or you know whatever it may be I'm still going to be active on like Instagram and Litzy and in the Facebook group um but the whole sitting down and editing a video that sort of stuff is just not gonna happen right now <laughs> um so yeah if you need book recommendations feel free to DM me on Instagram or just follow me on Instagram and um I hope if you're in this you know point of life that I was at too um change can be good sometimes um it wasn't change at my current job that I was afraid of it was just like things are changing you know this is this is it this is this is the I'm not a I'm not a person who I'm an atheist I don't have any spiritual or paranormal kind of face or anything like that but it's like the world is kind of giving you a uh, signs there it's pushing you um, and when I first moved here, I was originally like my goal is to move to Calgary. But with this pandemic, especially there's a, I think I had, because I just visited and, like the people I knew there, I had a very idealized version of what Calgary was. And it just is, has a lot of racists and the proud boys and Nazis and that sort of stuff. And Alberta is, when I moved here, people kept telling me it's not as bad as it's stereotyped to be. And maybe it is not to them because they're from there, from here. But honestly, as someone from Ontario, Alberta has a lot of problems um, when it comes to social stuff. And so much of it is tied to oil and Christianity here. Um, there's so much racism, so much racism. And that's just the very blatant stuff that I'm able to witness as a white person. This isn't in addition to any like microaggressions that, you know, black kids probably feel at school or indigenous people. Like I am an outside looking in lens. Um, the homophobia and just the rampant bigotry here is just, it's just accepted and okay with a lot of people. Um, you know, there's maybe a, a quarter of the province population wise that, you know, see that and see it as an issue. Um, but there is an overwhelming majority of people here that are okay with it or actively partake in it. And it's just not a comfortable place when you grow up. Ontario has issues. I know it does too, but I loved growing up in Ontario, um, playing hockey with people from like families from all over, all over the background, India and all over, like just all over Asia and Africa. And even if they're like three or four generations here, like it's just so, I had such a good, good experience growing up and playing hockey and working with people from just so many different backgrounds. And then coming here, it's just such a vacant hole. Um, and it's just very weird and uncomfortable because it just seems so unnatural and unnorm like weird. Like how do you in this day and age with globalization and movement and everything, how does that still happen here? It's just because they've made everyone feel very unwelcome here. Um, so moving has its difficulties and a new job is scary and big, but I'm very happy with my decision. And um, I think 30th birthday next May. I think I hopefully I'll be the happiest I've been um and yeah this is just a good pick for me so I'm sorry if my videos were a big thing for you I don't think there's many people but um yeah this is this is it this is the path I want to take and so this is the path I'm taking and it, it it definitely dawned on me that I was leaving when I packed my books um and I have three no four Nespresso pods, coffee pods left, and then I'm packing my coffee machine, which will be the, like, 
nail in the coffin. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's it. So um, stay safe, wear a mask, and um, follow me on my Instagram and everything else. And hopefully I'll be back in a little while. Bye. Okay, so I haven't done one of these vloggy things in a while. I don't know if it's going to go up as a vlog or in part of a whatever. Uh, it's September 1st. Um, I've mentioned this before on other videos, but I um, have been very unhappy in Alberta, especially the last couple months. And um, I lost my grandpa last year without, right before the pandemic, right when it hit basically. And never really got to like see him um, because of just where I was living geographically. It was very expensive. Oh my God, hairball. And so I missed out on getting to see him before he passed away. Um, and my sister and my mom have kind of settled in a new place than where they were when I finished grad school uh, about five and a half years ago. And so I've just been looking to try and find something near them geographically um, that I was qualified for, that was a position I was interested in. And finally something popped up and the stars aligned and um, I didn't hear you were great, we just went with someone for with more experience for once. So I have accepted a job back in Ontario. So I, it's September 1st, like I said, I start on September 27th. I don't know, they, they were like, what day sounds good? And I looked and I went September 27th, giving myself like only like three weeks or so to give my notice and pack and move from Alberta to Ontario. Stupid idea, it literally just happened like a couple hours ago. I'm still waiting to get my formal letters though from them with the offer. Um, but the first thing I really wanna do for some reason is weed the fuck out of my collection here. I feel like that's gonna be the biggest, like, when I see that, realize that it's kind of real. So, we're gonna see what's gonna survive. I'm taking into account, A, are they UK editions that I'd spend a lot of money and time to get? Are they series I, you know, enjoy, but will never probably pick up and reread again? Are they things that I don't intend on completing my collection of them? You know, we'll see. Um, or things that, like, I've bought the audiobook of it and the book is maybe not super special. It doesn't have any uh, foiling or anything on the actual book so that, you know, it's no harm. If I get rid of it, I can still read it via audiobook. So I'm gonna, gonna start that tonight. I don't know why I can't just let myself... Well, I, I shouldn't say be happy for a day because I had a meltdown and cried on the floor happily. Um, but this, like, makes me happy. I, I can't explain. So... We're, yeah, I'm going to start weeding and I will check in, I don't know, each bookcase and see how it goes. So right now it's, these are my completed series. Um, and then these, the rest, uh, starting down here actually. Um, and onwards are my incomplete series and standalones. So I will do this, you know, the completed series first and we'll see what is left. Okay. And don't worry, nothing is going to be thrown out. I'm donating it all. Um, to my current job that I'm going to be giving my notice at um, for Take a Book, Leave a Books in um, predominantly Indigenous communities. So they will go to good use there. So no worrying about that. And books are just expensive. Moving in Canada is really expensive. So I have to keep in mind that even though I'm not moving a whole home, I'm going to have to hire movers because I have a bed and a couch and everything that I bought like pretty recently in the last year or so that I want to take with me. Um, so I'm being conscious that I would like to try and keep it under like 20-ish box of books that I want to take with me. Um, and I've been conscious of that in the last several months, especially when I'm looking at buying books and thinking, just put it on a list. Just put it on a list. Once you're settled, you will get it. So I don't think it'll be super bad, but we'll see. Also, I've been actively weeding for like a while now. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Alrighty, so I've read these, um, just don't really have much of a use for them anymore. I don't plan on ever having to reread that. Um, I love this series, but it's mismatched. Whoops! It's mismatched. You see the paperback, hardcover, and torn up a little bit. And I've read them. I love them. I own the audiobooks of them, so I'm fine with unhauling those. I'm unhauling this series. I enjoyed it when it first came out, even though it was mismarketed, but I've never felt the need to um, pick it up to reread. 
the way I'm keeping her Snow Like Ashes series. Um, I've never read The Pearl Thief, um, but I have read the two books that come after it, because this is the prequel story. Love these, but the covers aren't anything to die for, and again, I own them digitally, so those are fine. Um, Crowns Game, I've read this series, was very disappointed by this book, but they're very pretty covers, but I now own the digital copy of this, the audio, I and mean, if I want to reread it, I wouldn't want to end up probably rereading that. I would just read the audio of it. So I'm going to unhaul these. They're pretty. Someone else can can enjoy them. The first book was fantastic. Um, these were paperback, pretty cheap purchases. And I've read two of the three. I'll read the third one, but I can get it again. Audiobook um, on my library card. I've read the Song of the Dead duology. It's been a couple years. Haven't felt the need to rebuy them. So I'll let someone else enjoy them. The Deepest, so the Renthia one. I've read all these books. I enjoy them. I own the audio copies. They're really nice, but I think someone else would really enjoy them. So I'm going to pass those, those off. The Batman, well, the superhero ones. I've read all of them. I enjoyed all of them. I've read them. I've never felt the need to reread them. So they can go again. Someone else can enjoy them. Love this series. I own the audios, though. And the covers aren't anything to die for. And they keep changing them. Uh, Wolf for Wolf unhauling i really really love this duology but they're pay rocks i've read them i own the digital copies of them so um those are the ones i'll reread audio if i like them getting rid of the um is it charlotte holmes quartet i enjoy them finish them someone else can enjoy them and finish them <laughs> same thing with stocking jack the rippers quartet i've read them just haven't felt the need to pick them up again since i finished the series and same with the Ice Wolf series. I enjoy them. They're very pretty covers, but I don't feel that I'll want to reread them. So those will all get donated. Those are the completed series. So I got rid of about two full shelves here. Okay, I still have these bookcases to do and my like nonfiction section in my living room, but... So these ones that I'm pulling, Power, I liked it, just haven't wanted to reread it. The Electric Kingdom was really good. Again, I don't think I'll reread it, though. Candle of Flame, fantastic. I loved it at the time. I just never want to reread it, and with my YA fantasy lack of interest, probably not going to. It's gorgeous, though. Someone can definitely enjoy it. Read it, enjoyed it, probably not going to reread that. Star Thief, I don't think I've actually read that, but I just haven't felt the need to pick it up. Devils Unto Dust. I read the author's other thing and I just keep finding excuses not to read this. I read it, liked it, but didn't love it. Firekeeper's Daughter. Read it, liked it, loved it. Don't don't plan on ever rereading it though. It's difficult to read. And someone can definitely make use of that. Song of Wraiths and Ruin. I'm going to wait and see if I can get back into YA fantasies. If so, then I'll be picking up that and the sequel. The Binding I loved and then found out that the author is a turf and haven't had an interest in picking it up since. Play Bad Heroines. It was all right. Didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Someone else can love it. Got this off Book Outlet years ago and just haven't found a reason to pick it up. I love this, but uh, still waiting on the third book. I'll wait till the third book comes out, but I own books one and two as an audiobook, so that's fine. Gunslinger Girl, I liked it, just don't want to reread it. The cover's cool, um, but someone else can enjoy it. Love Lindsay Fay. I keep following her stuff, um, but I just can't justify moving them. They're great. Someone else can love them. Okay, I've been inter interrupted about 14 billion times now, but so I managed to, what, we're down there, I think, so we got rid of one, two, three, most of that, four, five and a half or so shelves. Um, all these, most of them have been read, I uh, just don't plan on rereading them, and when push comes to shove, I love them, but like, they're going to cost me money to move, so the only one that I'm, I plan on probably buying that, this is an ARC though, so... That's fine. I own the audio copy of it. I love it, but it's just a arc paperback. So there's that. Um, yeah, everything else I think for the most part I have read. I am going to unhaul these just because they're they're kind of 
falling apart. Um, Watson or this little devil definitely peed on one or two of them years ago. Um, and they're like just $10 a piece and I'm almost done the series. So, and I own them on audio too now. So that's fine. Yeah. Uh, everything that was over here is try to read or weed by the end of the year is just going to get weeded by default at this point. Are you going to jump? So I have those that I'll have, um, to all weed, but they're being used as a mirror stand right now. Um, those are the Funkos that I'm keeping that were in here and the rest are the ones in the living, excuse me, the living room. And then there's my TBR for this month that I'm going to be keeping all those anyways. They're all series I worked on collecting. So yeah.